Hey, what's up? Liron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you're trying to paint beautiful, impressionistic watercolor paintings that still have that sense of realism and a sense of place. And one of the things I get asked about the most, and it seems to plague a lot of people who struggle with this thing, is how do I simplify in the way of merging shapes together? How do I know what shapes to connect so that I can get that flowy watercolor feeling because I know I should merge some areas together to keep the flow while still maintaining that sense of realism. So by the end of this video, hopefully you will understand one way of doing this that can always guide you so that you always know what will I merge to simplify this. So let's get to it. So I actually have a couple of scenes in front of me uh, and you'll notice the thing in common is that these are all snowy scenes. Uh, and I really think the best way to show you this is over uh, on a picture. So let's start with this one. I don't know exactly what or which one we'll paint today, but we'll, we'll take it step by step. So when I look at this kind of a thing and you may look at it and you may feel confused, you may feel, okay, um, what do I want to show of the this church or cathedral? What do I want to show of this tree or that? Where should I place things? Now the first step, and let me zoom in a bit, is to actually turn this black and white. Once it's black and white, it is much easier to see. And the reason I chose snowy scenes is because they make things easier. They tend to have this pattern of uh, light and a dark or a light and a dark and a mid value so it's much easier now take a few steps back from the monitor if you will look at things from afar and tell me what shapes do you even see here um, so squint your eyes really I, I like to do that and you will start to notice a few big major shapes and let me show you one shape is actually all of this section and I know I'm using a black uh, marker or, or a pen so it's a bit hard to see but look at this shape here it's just a shadow right like this but it's all one big shape when you think about it with all of the foliage here and perhaps a gap for the tree branch right around here okay now let me show it to you up close and maybe in the light so you'll see this is all to me one big shape. Now there are some details in it, some highlights. Yes, you can paint around those, but treat this as one big shape. Well, let's look at another one. Look at the, the left side of the tree here, this shadow, right? All the way down to the bottom, and it actually is the same value as this. So by now, you probably uh, are catching up to the method. The method is look for similar values and paint them together. And it may seem a little odd, it may feel a little odd or unnatural, but trust me, you do this, you will get the impression, okay? All of this shape here to the left, same thing. This is all just one big shape, all of this, okay? And then we have a separate shape, the highlighted part of the tree trunk, because it's not as light as the snow, it is a little darker, so we have that. It's actually similar to the front of this structure that is, again, not white like the snow, but maybe a mid-value. So right now we have a dark, we have a light, and we have a mid-value. And that's all we got in this one, three values. And we can really connect them. Look at this tree. Now, is this tree a little darker than this background? Yes. Do you have some wiggle room? Yeah, you can decide to separate it from the background by making this shape a little lighter, okay? You have some choice within that, but overall, this is how you do it. This is how you find those big shapes to merge together. Look at the snow. Don't forget about the shapes that are negative spaces. This is also a shape. Going around here, around the darks, around a tree, this is another shape, okay? So we have this shape, we have this shape, we have this shape, we have this shape, all of this, and maybe this shape. The nuances you get with the technique while doing the wash, but I do want to show you how I paint this. Okay, so again, if you look at it here, I'll show you again, the shadow, the snow, shadow on the tree, tree, consider, do I want to bring this one out and make it darker and keep the background lighter? Yes, you can make a few changes. So let's get to it. I'm going to paint this, probably going to run through some areas fast and just kind of narrate after the fact what I'm doing and how I'm taking these into consideration. So believe it or not, this is actually the drawing. Let me show you once again with the reference photo. And again, the key here is simplicity. You need to trust yourself that within those shapes, you will be able to add a few more flares and touches of your own. But the general idea is find the similar values and merge them. And now what I'm gonna do is start painting this, okay? Uh, we're gonna start with 
uh, perhaps those mid values and then move on to the darks and leave the snow completely white. Okay, so the first stage is the mid values. So this is the sides of the buildings and the trees that are exposed to the light. These are shapes that are not white. We're not going to leave them snow white. Uh, we will give them some value, but it's going to be light. And again, this is like you follow it to the T. It's quite simple. I added a bit of my own variety of leaving gaps for the windows and some details, but for the most part, this is really it. It's very straightforward and this is how I want you to approach this. Don't feel the need to add any extra details. <laughs> I went a bit squiggly there with the trees, just having fun, but just focus on the areas you need to paint. Next up, is the dark shadows. Here is the left side of the building, left side of the trees, most of the tree on the right and most of the foliage in the background too. Just filling in those shapes. I thought I'd be fancy and add some gaps but it just didn't work out for me uh, unfortunately. Uh, so yeah, here you see how the plan really helps us to know what to paint. And don't forget, you can add opaque paint later and you can also uh, lift or you can do wet and wet or add dark details on top and you're still golden. You're going to be fine. This step is going to be the longest because there is quite a lot to cover here uh, in, in the sh areas that are in the shadow. I'm going to take a bit of a handheld approach here. Just add some details. Sorry for the shakiness. Um, but these are very scarce. You don't need much really. Uh, just follow that um, blueprint we did in the beginning. So now adding this, one of the most beautiful parts of this scene in my opinion, the tree on the left, including all of the shadows on its branch and the new branches that are just darker. Now there is a bit more nuance in the mid value and dark when it comes to the branch, but I disregarded it and unified all the branches pretty much of these trees and the background again uh, as the black value here because we interpret this in just three values, white, black and the mid value okay um, so this is pretty much it I'm just gonna add a bunch of trees a bunch of branches here it was really important for me because if you look at it it is so full of these and you can still tell it's a snowy scene um, first because the trees are empty they're kind of barren um, and second just because in the context of the whole scene the ground being fully white hopefully that does tell the story of snow uh, a few smaller details there and we're going to jump soon into some details on the uh, snow itself that are going to bring it out a bit um, because it's not again not fully white to get the full context you do want to convey that there are some uh, I don't know it's not grass blades but you know s some of these weeds that are coming out through it um, conveying it's not just fully you know uh, white surface and then we have some white uh, opaque white highlights uh, just to add a few of the snowy parts of the rooftops that catch the snow tree branches that catch the snow basically everything that catches snow on it um, and this is why you don't have to worry about these things while you're doing the large shapes you can add them later on uh, and slowly improve your impression and your ability to do that immediately rather than wait but you see me adding quite a lot of darker spots highlights everything just to tell a better story and to complete the picture. So here we are, the final result, and I'm gonna remove the tape while just talking a bit about it. Uh, and again, it all comes down to these big shapes. And yes, as I've shown and mentioned, you can get a lot of nuance in them. You don't have to just stick to five shapes. You can get the nuance by either adding like opaque paint, as I've shown you here, uh, or by doing some negative painting around the highlights and all of the different means at your disposal. But at the basis of it is that editing of the shapes uh, into the lit side, the shadowy side, the trees are all in the dark, all the tree branches. And you will make mistakes. You will try and edit a photo and it won't be as good or it won't make a lot of sense. There's a lot that goes into this skill, but you do want to do this. Look at the values, figure out where the similar ones are and group those into one big shape. Have your drawing reflect that. That's a key part of this. With that, let's wrap it up. Hey, so thank you so much once again for watching. I did tape these just so that you can get a flat look at it because the paper buckled quite a bit. That sometimes will happen. But overall, very happy with the result. Stick to the fundamentals. Find those big shapes, build your composition. My compositions are very simple. I don't even change the original photos because I just like to find photos that I know 
will work compositionally so I don't tend to move things around too much the only thing I have in mind is the shapes and within that beautiful composition what, what are the main shapes this is pretty much it so once again I hope that makes sense let me know any questions you have at the in the comments uh, and let me know if you want me to do the rest of the scenes I wasn't really sure which ones I will paint for this one I kind of did it spontaneously but if you want to see the rest let me know I can do follow-up videos and again let me know those questions because I did get a lot of questions about this hopefully this answers some of them let me know thank you so much for watching i will see you again real soon